Hello, I'm Luis Ortega for PCR Online and Aero Intervention. Today we have a pleasure to host Professor Eliano Navarese from Nicolás Copernico University in Poland. He is the first author of the systematic review and meta-analysis comparing revascularization and optical medical treatment versus optical medical treatment in chronic coronary syndromes. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you, Dr. Navarese. How are you? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here today. It's my great pleasure to we, this this study was uh, presented in uh, Euro PCR 2021 as a late breaking clinical trial, and also it was simultaneously simultaneously publicated in a European Heart Journal. And my first question, Dr. Navarese, is: uh, What was the evidence in the, uh, the the gap in the evidence that you detect that motivated you to perform this systematic review and meta analysis? Sure. Thank you for the question, which is pertinent, and uh, we know that. Uh, uh, none of the trials uh, comparing uh, elective coronary revascularization versus medical therapy in stable patients was powered to address uh, cardiac mortality as, as an endpoint, as an individual art endpoint. Uh, the ischemia trial, that was the largest trial so far, uh, was uh, um, underpowered as the other trials, but uh, uh, showed uh, some important uh, uh, fewer cardiovascular deaths uh, in the revascularization arm. So based on this uh, background, we decided to conduct a large-scale meta-analysis uh, of um, the randomized clinical trials comparing elective coronary vascularization plus medical therapy versus medical therapy alone in stable patients with documented coronary artery disease. Thank you. We are not all used uh, in the methodology of uh, meta-analysis and systematic reviews. You are an expert in this field. Uh, can you share with us what was the methodology you used for performing this uh, work? Thanks for the question, which is also important. Uh, as we know, uh, meta-analysis uh, it, it can be very relevant to address uh, individual endpoints. And uh, in this case, the large scale meta analysis conducted uh, was able to reach a significant statistical power to answer this question. The methodology followed the Cochrane collaboration guidelines. It means that uh, we uh, included uh, the in entire pertinent trial evidence as uh, strongly recommended by Cochrane guidelines. So, no subjective selection studies which would have led by, to a bias, but the entire evidence and conducted also several sensitivity analysis to corroborate the overall findings. We uh, considered the impact of follow up duration, as we have seen already in the ischemia trial. The longest follow up showed fewer cardiovascular deaths. So, along with the lines, we decided to uh, consider the longest follow-up data as, uh, as data pertinent for abstraction. And uh, we, uh, in order to account uh, to the variation of follow-up across trial, we use the rate to ratio. And uh, in order to account also for any potential difference across trial, we use a very conservative model named the random effects model. Okay, uh, that was a good explanation because uh, I, I highlighted that most of the, the people really don't know how to how they are the meta analysis are done, and we are not used to this methodology. Thank you for this uh, lights. And what is the main finding of the? I, 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 there are a lot of uh, secondary endpoints, but which is the main finding of your of your work? Yeah, sure. Thank you for the question. Um, we pre-specify the cardiac mortality to be the primary endpoint of this analysis that was also pre-registered before all analysis and in line also with the cardiovascular mortality primary component of this schema trial. So we, we did find a significant and a robust reduction of cardiac mortality in favor of revascularization plus medical therapy versus medical therapy alone. And uh, importantly, this significant reduction persisted in all sensitivity analysis conducted. The magnitude of this reduction was uh, actually related to the length of follow-up. This is also important. So there was an increase in the benefit with the revascularization with the longer follow-up times. And cardiac mortality was related to spontaneous myocardial infarction, which gives biological plausibility to the findings. Conversely, the periprocedural myocardial infarction was not related to cardiac mortality. Okay. All, I mean, in research, we, we know all works have strengths and have limitations. Could you share with us which are the strengths of your work, which are the limitations of your work? Yeah, 
Sure. Um, so the meta-analysis is a large scale analysis uh, that incorporated the evidence and the results were very robust in showing this reduction in cardiac mortality. There was a low heterogeneity, meaning that th there was a consistency of the effect across trial and the residual heterogeneity was explained entirely by follow-up duration. In contrast, medical therapy did not play an effect on cardiac mortality as we have seen, nor did the study here. So it means that the trial chronological order did not impact the findings of the analysis, which is also logical because medical therapy was given in a comparable fashion to both revascularization plus medical and the medical therapy alone arms so that finally the, the contribution of revascularization could be analyzed and explored on top of medical therapy. In terms of limitation, uh, this analysis uh, uh, is uh, uh, potentially uh, the, the, the role of crossover that we have seen uh, might have potentially diluted the benefit of revascularization because we have seen that, for instance, deleting a study with very high crossover, which is not a surprise to appear to come uh, with the longer follow-up times, further enhance the benefits in reduction in, uh, for instance, uh, all-cause mortality. But uh, uh, importantly, of course, uh, the individual patient data analysis will have uh, uh, would have also helped, uh, although uh, we can say that uh, on the other end, the consistency uh, of the effect across trials uh, and the denial sensitivity analysis plus uh, uh, the robust uh, relation with the spontaneous MI and follow-up uh, contributed to consider this effect and meaningful. And at the last point, uh, the analysis was also accompanied by a trial sequential analysis, which is a way to say, are the results definitive or not? And the answer was yes, because with this analysis, it was evident that firm, uh, firm clinical trial evidence pooled was reached to affirm the benefit of revascularization. Okay, that was very insightful. Uh, I, I, I want to ask you, this is a very clinical question and a straightforward one. Do you believe that the work that you presented in EuroPCR 2021 will impact clinical practice? Do you believe that, that, that we should change our clinical practice because of the result of your work? I think that we have a multiple convergence evidence that is indicating us that the revascularization first that does not harm, as someone has speculated, because of the periprocedural MI, which is not related to cardiac mortality in this analysis, for instance. And second point, that the, this multiple convergence, as we've seen also in other analyses, as that one presented uh, in terms of complete revascularization, reducing mortality, as analysis of the ischemia trial itself in, uh, presented during the American College Cardiology Congress. So building up and, and uh, lumping together uh, all these evidence uh, uh, there is a, a strong suggestion that our clinical practice should be oriented towards uh, uh, treating these patients with the revask also because we don't know when an MI for instance could happen so better to treat today what we could not delay until tomorrow okay. and prevent potentially also cardiovascular mortality re re uh, increase or any favor cardiac mortality reduction okay I, I, I we, we have to, to wait. Uh, I believe, you know, uh, chronic coronary disease uh, syndromes uh, guidelines are very new. So I think we will, we will have to wait a little bit. But up, until, that, until that day, we have a lot of new evidence. Thank you for your work and thank you for the ischemia investigator, which are also making a, a lot of uh, super study of ischemia just to give us more in, insights and, and guidance on what we should do. Uh, I think you will agree also with me in this one that we should put the patient preference also in the equation. This is something very important. And I believe this, uh, your work and uh, ischemia work will give, will give us a lot of discussion for the, <laughs> for the forward years. So Dr. Navarrese, it has been a great pleasure to have you. We, we don't have a, always the pleasure to interview the first out of the late-breaking clinical trial and, and simultaneous publication in, in Open Heart. And, and also, uh, you are an expert on meta-analysis, so that's something I, I want to highlight because uh, not all interventional cardiologists and not all the, the, the investigators are used to this type of methodology. That could be very helpful and useful for gathering the information we have from clinical trials, RCTs, and try to move forward the, the field. So 
thank for your time for 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 your insights and it has been a pleasure from for me and for PCR online and our intervention. Thank you to you and thank you to all colleagues and friends. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.